Do you hurry down here. Miss Gillen is hurt. Good. Oh, Such a keen sense of humor. Now, Miss Gillen, where will we? Ah, yes, of course, the pulpit. Mr. Tupai will come straight to the point. I have reason to believe that the pulpit was decorated behind my back by Mrs. Toop. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Yes, uh, most awkward. Of course, I have nothing against Mrs. Toop personally, nothing at all. There are some who do not think it quite the thing for the vicar's wife to appear in the village wearing trousers, even in these times. But as I say, we must remember Mrs. Toop was an actress before she married you. Mrs. Toop was also the niece of a bishop before I married her, Miss Gillen, and still is. Oh, yes, indeed, I know, but of course the stage, a curious profession. Ah, Miss Gillen. <laughs> Miss Gillen, you must excuse this, but I am straight from the bath. Of course, Mrs. Toop. One does get so dirty decorating the church. Oh, quite, quite, quite. quite. Uh, now, who's been mother? Mother? I mean, who bought the tea? I'm dying for a cup, but I'm frightfully superstitious. And they say if two people pour from the same pot, it's a sign of a row. Oh. Or that one of the boys is going to have a baby, and we don't want one just yet, do we, darling? Penelope, please. And I'm sure Miss Skillen doesn't. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, darling, do you think Mr. Uh, what's-his-name will mind? Mr. Who? Oh, Mother, yeah. you know, your friend, the one that's coming to take the service tomorrow. You mean Humphrey? Oh, of course, Mr. Humphrey. Mr. Humphrey is not a friend of mine, Penelope. I've never even met the man. Well, do you think he'll mind? Will he mind what? Oh, well, I'm afraid you'd rather I'm short of chrysanthemums. The pulpit is mostly decorated with turnips and leeks. Now, Miss Gillen, no. more tea. I do not wish any tea, thank you. Oh. Well, what have I done wrong now? Penelope. Oh, there's no point in pretending I haven't erred and strayed the air simply charged with righteous indignation. So, Lionel, why don't you run along like a good boy, then Miss Skillen and I can let our back hair down and scratch each other's eyes out. I did not call to see you, Mrs. Toop. I merely wish to have a little talk with the vicar. Oh, it is the most exasperating fact, Miss Skillen, that after every one of your little talks with my husband, he and I have one hell of a row. Penelope, dear, I'm sure Miss Skillen only wishes to be helpful. She has known the villagers longer than you have. She hears more of their gossip than you. Oh, I'll say she does. Mr. Toop, I cannot stay here any longer to be insulted. Mrs. Toop, you have been in this village nearly a year now. During all that time, I have never done anything but try to befriend you. Oh, oh then it must all be my fault. I'm sorry, Miss Skillen, but the fact remains that every time we meet, I'm seized with this wild desire to leap on the village gro green, tear all my clothes off, and dance the hula hula. If you did, we might be shocked, Mrs. Toop, but I don't think we should be surprised. Oh. <laughs> By the way, what was it this time, the uh, soldier on the lorry? No, it was not. As a matter of fact, Miss Gillen mentioned that to me yesterday. It was a most unfortunate incident. You call waving to a soldier on a lorry a most unfortunate incident? It's what others might call it that matters, Mrs. Toop. You not only wait, you do. You who? Oh, you who? <laughs> yes, sir. So I did. Did you know the soldier, Penelope? Well, not for madam. I hardly even had time to notice him. He just waved and you who. So I waved and you who back, didn't I, Miss Skillen? Hardly conduct suitable for a vicar's wife, surely. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget that I'm a vicar's wife and act like an ordinary human being. Penelope, I resent that. Well, I know, if we are going to have a row, we are not going to have one in front of Miss Skillen. You need not worry about me, Mrs. Toop. I am going. I'm sorry my good intentions have been so misunderstood. Goodbye, Mr. Toop. Miss Skillen, I can't say. Please that. don't think about it. I hope I can forget and forgive. I think I'm broad minded. <laughs> I'm sure you are, Miss Skillen. Penelope! I'll see you to your uh, bicycle. Thank you. I'm perfectly capable of mounting by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! Ida! Ida! Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'd even clear away the tea things, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Where? Somebody hasn't drunk all their tea. Oh, that's mine, Ida. You can take it away. I don't want it. And you haven't had no muffin either. You haven't been letting her upset you, have you, ma'am? You know why she's got a knife into you, don't you, ma'am? Oh, I think so, Ida. And so does everybody. Well, I'll say this for her. She tried hard enough, but if she'd landed him, it would have been God help him. <laughs> Penelope, I'm ashamed, ashamed. Oh, I knew it, I knew it. Off we go. One day I am going to strangle that woman. What did she actually come about? I never did find out. It appears that you have decorated the pulpit for the Harvest Festival. Well, what about it? The pulpit has always been Miss Skillen's territory. Oh, darling, Lionel, I didn't do it purposely. I swear I didn't. Of course, that old cow will never believe it. Penelope, <laughs> I must ask you to... Your 
language. You know, in your position, you should behave with a little more decorum. Oh, you mean I should learn to act the vicar's wife a little more? Not act, but be the vicar's wife. Oh, that is the trouble, Penelope. Can't you forget that you've been an actress and behave more as befits the niece of a bishop? <laughs> and just how is that? The only other bishop's niece I know is in the chorus at the windmill. I believe you are deliberately trying to repent me. May I ask just one other question? Is it absolutely necessary for you to go about the village in trousers? Oh, well, and why shouldn't I? They're comfortable, they're serviceable, and they're economical. Oh, that may be, but as Miss... Oh, Jones... darling, a woman with a bottom like hers would say anything. Penelope! Oh, she's only here because she can't wear them. I refuse to stay here and listen to your vulgarity. Oh, and another thing. Please, sir. What is it, Ida? It's Willie Briggs from the farm, sir. He's waiting at the back door. I'll see him at once. May I suggest, Penelope, that you go upstairs and dress? I would rather people saw you in trousers than without them. <laughs> She's still here, Mum. Well, who are you talking about, Ida? Miss Gillen, Mum. She's in the garage. What is she still doing there? Mending her bicycle. I punctured it. <laughs> seeing him tomorrow. Oh, there's no need to get so excited, Lionel. He's staying at Manchester at the Cross Keys and coming on here tomorrow. The Cross Keys? Oh, but that's such an indifferent hotel. <laughs> then I suppose he wouldn't know that. Oh, even a bishop can learn. Oh, the bishop here tomorrow, and I'm not taking the service. I know. Aren't you lucky? I beg your pardon? Well, Uncle is very proud of the fact that he memorised all of his sermons. If he saw you reading yours, he'd cut me out of his will. <laughs> Besides, he's arriving just in time to be too late for the service tomorrow. Extraordinary. No human. Do you think you can get something decent in for Uncle to drink? All we have at the moment is some very bad cooking, Sherry. What should we get? Oh, anything you can. Use your sex appeal. Uncle is very broad-minded. I'll get what I can. Oh, dear. I wonder if I should go now. Oh, go? Go where? <laughs> to Watthampton with the Glee singers. They're giving a concert at the camp there tonight. <laughs> Young Briggs has just come to tell me that their pianist is ill, and as they cannot find anyone else to ask if I will... Uh, Deputise for him. <laughs> and why shouldn't you go? But with the bishop arriving tomorrow. I don't I think there's any mentioned. necessity for you to prepare yourself for the occasion. Just go along and enjoy yourself. I should hardly describe playing the piano for the glee singers as enjoying. However, I suppose I must do it. Briggs is waiting for me now. Will you be back late, are you? I shouldn't think so. Although Briggs mentioned something about a supper after the concert. Apparently, that is the principal feature of the evening. Please, sir. Willie Briggs says, Willie, worry, sir. Time's getting on. I'm just coming. Now, are you sure you won't be lonely? Oh, of course not. Why should I? Well, goodbye, Penelope. We'll go upstairs and put a few more clothes on, won't you? Oh. Uh, your night out, Ida? Yes, sir. Oh, Ida, when you come in tonight, will you put a couple of hot water bottles in the spare bedroom bed? We have a guest arriving tomorrow. Oh, no. Oh, my uncle, the Bishop of Lax. Oh, Bishop. Oh, and try not to be out too late. You know the vicar doesn't like you when you're out after ten. Americans or no Americans. <laughs> Trouble you, Idris. You haven't got no oomph. <laughs> what are you wanting anything, Mum? Oh, I didn't see you there, either. I saw you. I suppose you know you have punctured my bicycle. Oh, Mum, I, I never. You're a very careless girl. 
I was wondering if the vicar would help me. I'm having a little trouble with my inner tube. I'm sure he'd be delighted. He's gone out. Out? Where? Out. Has Mrs. Duke gone too? No, she hasn't. She'll be down in a minute. Oh, well, in that case, I won't stay. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Either is this a friend of yours? No, ma'am. Not yet. <laughs> Excuse me, are you Mrs... Uh, are you the vicar's wife? I am not. Uh, good. I, I mean, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I mean is... Do you want to see Mrs. Toop? Mrs. who? Mrs. Toop, the vicar's wife. Do you want to see her? Well, I don't really know. I beg your pardon. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to find a young lady. Indeed. <laughs> do you mean a special one? Or would anyone do? I do <laughs> a, a special one. A very special one. A very old friend of mine. Well, why come to the vicarage? There are no young ladies here, none. Well, it might not be what you call a lady, but got me feelings. Quiet, yes. Ida. <laughs> Haven't I seen you before, young man? Seen me before? No, I don't think so. I'm sure I've seen your face before. I have a very good memory for faces. Yes, well, I've had it a long time. Penelope! Clyde! Sweet oh, darling! <laughs> what are you doing here? Looking for you. Oh, this is heaven. <laughs> Oh, Miss Skillen, uh, the vicar is out. Oh, I'm afraid he won't be back until rather late. Ida, uh, tell him that you called again, and that you will no doubt call again very early in the morning. But I uh, think that is all, Miss Skillen. Well, really? Oh, Ida, this is a very old friend of mine. We used to be on the stage together. It's all right, Mum. You don't need a sledgehammer to get rid of me. Live and let live, that's what I say. <laughs> I say you've soon cleared the decks, haven't you? But weren't you rather cool with Miss Sporting and Dramatic? Oh, cool, Miss Skillen. Every time I see that woman, my temperature rises and breaks another record. Although it is a pity I break it in front of her. Why? Oh, she won't sleep until she's told my husband. <laughs> Your husband? I say, you're not Mrs. Uh, uh, Boopadoop, are you? Oh, Toop, darling, Toop. Don't make it any worse than it is. Yes, but you're not, are you? Well, I am and have been for nearly a year now. Why? What do you mean, why? Well, you, a vicar's wife. The last time I saw you, you were a young actress bursting with ambition. And now here you are. An old married hag, is that it? Well, no, not yet. Well, there's no mystery about it, Clive. I knew Lionel. Well, that's my husband. When I was a child, we grew up in the same village. Eighteen months again, we met again, fell in love, and well, here I am. And your career? Oh, that. Well, my acting wasn't exactly what you call brilliant, was it? I don't know. Oh, I do. Well, not so bad anyway. Look, are you happy here? Oh, yes, perfectly. I mean, sometimes I lose my sense of humour and feel like screaming the place down. <laughs> I bet you do. Oh, but on the whole, I am very happy. Oh, but what about you? What are you doing here? Tell me about yourself. Uh, oh, well, do you want some tea? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, the only other thing, I've got some very bad cooking, Sherry. And I haven't bought anything to cook. Oh, <laughs> can I tell me about yourself? Well, thanks to Mr. Hitler, my theatrical career is temporarily terminated. Uh, mind you, I'm still acting, but unpaid. I've uh, been stationed at various places and just been moved down here. Oh, where? Wadhampton, the internment camp. Very important job guarding German prisoners. Oh, Wadhampton, Lionel's gone there this evening. He's playing the piano with the village gleesons. They're, they're giving a concert for the boys. Poor boys. Oh, Clive, tell me, how did you know I was here? I saw you yesterday. What? Where? You saw me too. I was on a lorry. Well, I waved and you hooed. I, I, I thought you recognized me. You waved back. Oh, good Lord, was that you? Yes. Well, I saw you turn in at the vicarage gate and thought maybe you were staying here. So as I had the evening off, I thought I'd look you up. Oh, well, thank goodness you did. I was just wondering what I was going to do to pass the evening. Although I don't think we ought to stay in this house. Why not? It's a very comfortable house. Oh, yes, but apart from you, I am the only person in it. Ah, I see. And Miss Skillen wouldn't approve, hey? Oh, she wouldn't approve, but God, would she love it. What she'd make of that? Well, we'd better go out somewhere, then. Oh, go out, but go where? There's nowhere to go around here. We could always go down to the vill... Ah, I suppose it wouldn't be quite the thing for the vicar's wife to be seen in the village pub with a soldier. <laughs> it wouldn't be quite the thing for the vicar's wife to be seen in the pub at all, you fool. But what's about a flick? Oh, I know. Uh, could you bear to put your nose inside a theatre, or would it break your heart? A theatre? What theatre? Oh, we have a local rep. Oh, here we are. This week, the court players... No, I don't believe it. As I can. Six to four, it's Sweeney Todd. No, 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 listen. This week, the court players present Noel Coward's delightful comedy, Private Lives. No! Yes! Oh, Clive, just how many weeks did we tour in that together? Forty-three. Oh, and a half. There were those last three nights. Oh, no, no. How could you bear to see it tonight? Bear to? I'd love to, although...
Although I'll probably be thrown out of the theatre for shouting out the lines of my old pa. Oh, well, then we'll go. Oh, wait a minute. Where is it? Oh, it's Blackford. It's only a couple of miles and there's a bus. I'm sorry, my dear. The trip's off. Well, what? Why? Blackford is out of bounds. Well, out of bounds? What does that mean? Simply that if I was caught in Blackford in uniform, I'd be shot at dawn. And they'd cancel my next lead. Oh, well, why is it out of bounds? For what reason? My sweet in the army, there is never any reason for anything. I suppose one of the high-ups just thought it would be rather a good idea, what? Oh, well, it's a damn shame. Just think, we could have gone over there, had a lovely meal, seen the show, had another meal, and then come back on the last bus. <laughs> My dear, you must be hungry. It, it sounds marvellous, but as Shakespeare says, we've had it. I say, do you mind if I smoke? Oh, no, help yourself. There's plenty there. Thank you. Excuse me, why haven't you gone yet, Ida? Yes, Mum, I've been and come back. Well, have you forgotten something? Yes, Mum, Mr. Toopsie's trousers. What? Well, you know, Mum, you said you wanted Mother to put a patch on... Oh, yes, I remember. I brought the whole suit down this morning. Um, here we are. Can you ask your mother to have a look at the jacket collar and around the cuff? Oh, Mum, this isn't it. <laughs> well, it's not. No, Mum, this is Mr. Toopsie's second best suit. How many has he got? Three. Black Margaret, eh? Oh. Damn, well, what on earth did I do with the other one? I'd better go and look for it, Mum. Oh, no, wait, Ida, I think I know just where to lay my hands on it. Um, sorry, Clive, I won't be a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out nice again, hasn't it? Not off. Eh? Oh, yes. Yes, I suppose it has, rather. Ida. I beg your pardon? Ida. Well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm Ida. Oh, I see, yes. You're Ida. Well, I, I'm awfully glad about that. Don't mention it. I say, uh, do you know who I am? No. Montgomery is the name. Go on, you're pulling my leg. As if I would. Oh, I think you're Yes, oh, that's, here we are, that's Ida. That's beautiful, Ask Ida. Mother to do the best she can with it. Oh, don't worry, Mum. Mother will make it so she won't know it from. Oh, well, she make it so Mr. Duke can wear it, that's all I ask. Well, I should wonder, Mum. I'll fetch it back with me tonight and put it upstairs. I'd better put that one away, Mum. Oh, no, it's all right. I can do that. Um, have you got brown paper and string in the kitchen? I think so. Well, uh, <laughs> right along. I wish you were in these. <laughs> oh, well, you have made a hit. A dainty morsel, that. Oh, Ida, she's an absolute joy. I wouldn't be without her for the world. Well, I suppose one man's pyjamas is another man's nightshirt. You can't get away from that. Oh, well, never mind about Ida. Look, I've, I've got my dear. Turn around. What? Will you? What is this? Medical inspection? Ninety-nine! <coughs> well, it's near enough for size. You can wear this. What? Well, I have another suit. What, me a parson? Don't be silly, darling. I'd be drummed oh, out. Well, why not? If you go as a civilian, who's to know you're a soldier? Uh, yes, but Penelope, the I... Private really... lives, Clive. A dinner and a lovely drink, Clive. Oh, all right. But don't forget, I've got to get back into uniform before I go back to camp. And what time are you due back? Any time before midnight. And we shall be back shortly after ten. That gives you plenty of time to change. Yeah, but won't your husband object? I mean, I'd kick up a hell of a fuss myself. Oh, well, so will he, but when it's too late for him to do anything about it. But besides, we shall be back long before he is, so he need never know. Yes, but suppose that... Suppose nothing. Well, look, if anyone asks, just say your name is Humphrey. Why Humphrey? Oh, he's just a man that's coming to take the service tomorrow. Oh, no, Penelope, I really don't just think Just take this. those things in there and... Wait change. a minute! Now, let me learn my part. My name is Humphrey, and I'm just the man who's coming to take the service tomorrow. I shan't really have to take the service tomorrow, shall I? <laughs> no, of course not. Yes, and why must I go in there? Because I shall be in here. Ah, see what you mean. <laughs> However, I do wish it to be put on record that I don't like this. I've played in too many plays where characters have done this sort of thing and something always goes wrong. Yes, but it's always right yourself by the last act. Just go on and change. But leave I the door open, like then I can it. talk to you. I still don't like it, Penelope. Ida? Don't bring her in here. I'm not. I'm just making sure she's gone. Someday I'll find you moonlight's behind you. Oh, that brings back memories. What, that song? Yes, every night all through the tour, the suspense of wondering whether you've managed to start on the right mode. Clive! <laughs> Followed, of course, by the agony of knowing that you hadn't. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. It's all right, you're too late. I say, what do I do about a collar? Oh, you can wear one of Lionel's. Dog or otherwise? Dog. No, I refuse. Penelope, I flatly refuse. I will not add sacrilege to my other crime. Come on, turn around. What again? And don't move, else I'll choke you. <coughs> yes, what do you think you're doing now? Steady on, my name isn't Skillen. 
At this moment in time, I wish it were. Just what is the size of this collar? Just 15. Just 15, and I take just 16. Still, what's an inch amongst friends? <laughs> yeah, do me a favor, swallow, I can't. <laughs> there. Right, now we've just got to figure out where to put this where it won't be found. Yes, and where it can be found when we get back. Oh, this'll do. The old chest, nobody ever goes in here. Nothing in it but gold things and Michael's tennis rackets. Yes, of course, I look like a fountain pen. What do I do with the bib thing? Oh, it goes inside, silly. Oh, right. oh, Clive, I am looking forward to this. I wonder if the girl that plays Amanda gets as many laughs as I did. I wonder if the man who plays Elliot gets as many bruises as I used to. What? What do you mean? You know perfectly well what I mean, the fight at the end of Act Two. Well, what about it? My dear girl, have you forgotten how you used to completely lose your head and nearly strangle me? I did not. No, and that final blow that was supposed to knock me off my feet? Never once did you get that in the right place. Clive! Never once! That is a deliberate lie. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, once. The last night of the tour. Oh, thank you. It was so simple, I remember just how it was supposed to go. <laughs> Your last line was beast, brute, swine, devil. And you were supposed to hit me on the devil. Well? Instead of which, I invariably got it when I was quite unprepared for it on the swine. Well, because you would move away from me. If I hadn't got in there, I'd have to canter halfway across the stage. My dear me. girl, I was on the floor. You were on top of me. Oh, yes, I remember. Over and over again. I say, can you remember the lines? Oh, well, how could I forget them? Then I'll show you exactly what I mean. Hmm? Go from your line. This is the end. You remember? Yes, I was, uh... Here. You ready? Fire away. This is the end, you understand? The end, finally and forever. You're not going like this. Yes, I am. You're not. Yes, I am. Let go of me. You're a cruel fiend, and I loathe and hate you. Thank God I realize in time what you're really like. Marry shut up, shut up. Never, I wouldn't never, marry you again. Never. You came crawling to me on your bended knees. You're a cruel, evil-minded little vampire, and I loathe and hate you. Let go. Go. Yes, thank you. I can manage perfectly well. 
either return or have to stay the night. What? The skillin is not well. She's squiffy. Hang down. Tight as an owl. Have you made them tight? That's what I like to know. Don't glare at me, girl, in that offensive manner. I am not responsible for Miss Skillen's condition. Well, then how does she get onto the cooking sherry? Will you kindly stop asking stupid questions and go and prepare a bed for Miss Skillen? Oh, get some hot water bottles. Hurry back and help me get Miss Skillen upstairs. <laughs> oh, where can Willoughby be? Hello? Hello, is, is that the Grange? Oh, is that you, Mrs. Chittenden Chumley? The vicar speaking. I was wondering if my wife had called on you this evening. You see, our prisoner has escaped from the internment camp. Yes, armed too. Oh, oh well, thank you so much, Mrs. Chittenden Chumley. So sorry to have troubled you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> what was that? Is anyone there? Oh, it's only you. No, I am fastening these windows. They should not have been left open. Either where is my hockey stick? Well, that won't bring a red. I did not ask you. Two observations, girl. I asked you where my hockey stick is. It's in the chest there, where it's always been. Any more of your rudeness, Ida, and I'm afraid we shall have to part company. Don't worry. After what I've seen tonight, I'm departing. Good heavens. Ida, how did these get in here? Well, they ain't mine. I'm perfectly well aware of that. Good heavens, Ida, did you lock the back door when you came in? No, I meant to. Go and look at it at once. Wait, what Don't stand there gaping, girl. Do as I tell you. Lock the back door and come back here at once. I want to speak to you. I'm afraid something terrible has happened in this house tonight. So your confidence is pricking you at last, then? Let it go. <laughs> the police. I wonder, should I? Yes. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what did you get in here? What do you want? I want your clothes. My clothes? Hi, Hitler! Where? Just 
What are you doing here? Well, I'm Ida. I'm the maid. Oh, the maid. Of course. You wouldn't think you'd see me all dressed up like this, would you? Mind you, Your Highness, if I'd known it was you at the front door, I'd have slipped into my uniform, even though it was my night out. You are forgiven. Yes, well. Sit down, Your Highness. I'll fetch you some supper. I want nothing to eat. Thank you. Sit down anyway. <laughs> I don't 
want to go to bed. <clears throat> Penelope, what is the mystery? Mystery, Uncle? It's no use standing there acting yourself, silly. I want to know what is wrong. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know, eh? Then why are you behaving so strangely? What is the matter with that maid of yours? And who was the lunatic that attacked me just now? What? I'm not going to say all that again. I will merely tell you that a lunatic, a wild-eyed creature in a state of undress, appeared from nowhere and threatened me with a poker. Oh, he disappeared as mysteriously as he came. When I questioned your maid, she, very clumsily, I thought, denied all knowledge of him. Well, you sit down again, my dear. I'll just take my coat off and we'll talk it all over quietly. Penelope, will you please stop trying to humour me? I assure you, I am in complete possession of all my faculties. And what did I say? And in fact, I am in just a thousand years. I tell you again, I am in the Oh. 
uncle. Upside down. Oh. The brandy. Brandy. There, there, my child. There, there, my child. How long does it take to get a divorce? What? How long does it take to get a divorce? There, 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 my child. Oh, stop hitting me. Don't ever be, my dear. You are overwrought. Oh, I'll say I am. What has this man done to you? I haven't done anything. Is it quiet? I am addressing your wife. <laughs> His wife? <laughs> me? His wife? No. You never have had that last gin and lime. <laughs>
I was almost in my bed when I heard someone shouting down here. We were just having a few words, that's all. To me, it sounded like a drunken brawl. No, 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 now look here, sir. I am looking, sir. Don't bother. Excuse me. (laughs) What is it, Ida? Can I have a word with you, Mum? Hello? Shall I go? No, of course not, Uncle. I seem to be in the way. Ida, where are you going? There's something at the front door, man. Ida, there has 
has been for hours now, but we can't let anybody in here till we get Miss Skinner out of the way. Well, you go to the front door and I'll manage her. I've well, managed to record your lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, you mustn't do that. 
that I'm reserved occupation. <laughs> Where is Mrs. Toop? Mrs. Toop, well, she was here a moment ago. I... She mustn't find me here. This is all her undoing. What is? My undoing. No, but I don't understand. Who has undone you? Oh, take me away. <laughs> take me away. No, my dear madam, please, unhand me. I beg of you. I'm a married man.
Are you not? Oh, yes, that's one thing I am certain of. I cannot help feeling that my presence here is an embarrassment to you. Have I your permission to go and find accommodation for the night in the village? Oh, of course you may. I can't begin to express how... Why not tell him everything? You're a sportsman, aren't you? Well, I, I never got a blue for anything, but I, I'm very good at rounders. Rounders! You must come and join us sometime. <laughs> Mr. Toop. You are Mr. Toop, are you not? No, that is just the thing. My husband is just outside and will be in here any minute. What? Oh, oh, why don't you go and help Uncle Mr. Mike? Mr. Toop, but when I was... <laughs> Will you 
won't get very far. There's uh, no petrol in it. Is that so? Yeah, yes, we've just filled our lighters. <laughs> I, 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 I say, do you mind if we sit down? We've had rather a strenuous evening. No tricks, Miss Eyre. And then you sit down, old boy. I don't feel that I want to somehow. Sit down! Yes! <laughs> well then, where do we go from here? What? Well, we can't just sit around here like this all night, can we? Listen to me. Out there, there are soldiers looking for me. Soldiers? Yeah. That's lucky. Lucky for you that you are not a soldier. Otherwise, you could be dead by now. What is a soldier? Very funny. Ha ha! Very <laughs> deception better alone. But, but how are you going to dispose of us? What is through the door? Well, it's just the cupboard. You, don't you, in your mouth. But I think that particular cupboard is engaged. <laughs> Put in there. Sweet Fanny Evans. In you go. Wait. <laughs> if any of those men come here, you must not make the slightest sound. The lady and I will be very close together. Stop that. She will be coming with this revolver. If you try to raise the alarm in any way, a bullet will enter her heart. Understand? I think so. I think perhaps you ought to repeat that. Chin up, sweetheart. Sweetheart, then you are Mr. Toot. I'm <laughs> so glad to meet you. What? Oh, yes, how do you do? In you go. Won't you? Oh, now look here, old chap. You can't do this to me. Can't I? Of course you can. Then move along, old boy. Pass right down the car, if you please. First of all, I want some money. Money? Yeah, for my escape. I'll write you a check. I need money now. There must be money in this house. Where is it? It's in the bedroom. Oh, I'll get it for you. Will you get oh, it? Oh, oh, Too late. Oh, They're here. Sit down. Remember, I am your husband. Together we will soon be rid of them. Your name, what is it? Penelope. Penelope what? Too. You don't think you'll get away with this, do you? Well, I sincerely hope so, for your sake. There's no need to go round to the front door. There's a window here. Oh, Who is God. that? It's my uncle. Your uncle? Then he even knows that I'm not your husband. He will betray me and I shall have to shoot you. I think you've just been aching to shoot me all night. Look, if you'll only be quiet, I think I can manage to save my own skin. Don't mind. All right, all right. Take it easy. There's nothing to get excited about. I am not excited. But I tell you, that man of yours deliberately knocked me down onto that narrow bed. He was only doing his duty for his king and country. He thought you was the bloke after, see? He thought you was the German prisoner. But I tell you... And anyhow, how do I know you are not, eh? You haven't proved it yet, have you, pal? Pal? <laughs> Penelope, will you please tell this gentleman who I am? Oh, yes, of course, darling. Um, Sergeant, this is my uncle, the Bishop of Lax. A bishop? Who well. <laughs> Sorry, your bishop, Rick. No offence. What, what happened to you, uncle? Well, you see, Mum, it's this way. Oh, may I, Mum? Oh, uh, we're looking for a German that's escaped from the camp, see? Well, one of the lads saw somebody darting into your garden, see? So uh, we had a scout around that comes across the old geezer here. Oh, no offence, sir. Upside down in a gooseberry bush. <laughs> well, his legs were sticking up, and um, at first we thought he was a wheelbarrow. Well, I can assure you, Sergeant, my uncle is not the man that you're looking for. Oh, well, what's that? Uh, I suppose you haven't seen a stranger knocking about, have you, Mum? No. I am afraid I haven't. Oh, well, that's that. <laughs> Get rid of them. What? Get rid of them. Oh, Uncle, why don't you go to bed? You had a very long evening. Um, Sergeant, are you going to be around here long? Oh, we're bound to hang about until we find him, but uh, don't you worry. Uh, I'll try not to. Well, uh, I'll be off. Good night, all. <laughs> oh, what a lovely mood. Makes me feel all romantic. Are you married, Sergeant? Why bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> now, Penelope, I should like a full explanation. And I presume this is your husband. Uh, uh, oh, yes, this is my husband. Uh, Lionel, this is my Uncle Dudley. You've uh, heard me speak of him. Very glad to meet you, sir. How do you do? But I don't understand. If this is your husband, who was the man that kept on hiding? 
He was a German. Oh, he was a German. What? The German. You mean the man those soldiers out there are hunting for? Then why didn't you tell me before? Because all the time he was here, he had me covered with a revolver. Oh, my poor child. No wonder you behave so strangely. Then who was the man that I mistook for a lunatic? Oh, that was you, wasn't it, darling? Yeah. But why were you in a state of undress? Oh, yes, sir. What were you? Uh, tell Uncle. The German came in here when I was alone. He attacked me and stole all my clothes. Oh, dear. Children, what a <laughs> ghastly experience. Suppose we telephone the police. What do you think? I think that would be most unwise. Do you? <laughs> Why? Because before the receiver had left the hook, your lifeless body would be falling to the floor. Oh, my dear, too pretty. Must you express your conjectures quite so, uh, so melodramatically? My lifeless body... I think, if you don't mind, I feel the need of a little um, stimulant. Oh, I'll get you one. Why do you follow your wife round like that? I love her. <laughs> Most abnormal passion. <laughs> Now 
found these in the garden just now. The clothes the German was wearing when he opted. it. I must speak. Sit down. Now, stands to reason, if he's managed to get rid of these, he must be wearing clothes that don't belong to him. If he's wearing any clothes at all, shut up. And as these was found in a vicarage garden, it's as likely as not, he's wearing a suit of clothes and he's pinched off the vicar. Most probable. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Don't let me interrupt. I won't. <laughs> so, what we have to look out for is a man dressed like a parson. <laughs> yes! Yes, he's quite right. A man dressed as a parson. Yes, 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 yes. Half a minute, half a minute. This isn't a parish council meeting. Excuse me. Who the hell are you? That's oh, Ida, my maid. Doors. You are maid, eh? Uh, what is it, Ida? So, you are the maid, are you? Not very quick on the uptake, are you? <laughs> Can I have a word with you, Mum? No, you can't. <laughs> Nobody leaves this room until I give the word. Why, what's happened? Never you mind. Out you go, my girl, and thank you, lucky stars, you're not mixed up in it. <laughs> or are you? <laughs> no, you couldn't be. Oh, dear, what have you all been up to? Uh, goodbye, Ida. There's ten shillings for you. Yeah, but you... No, 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 don't thank me now. Just one word of advice before you go. Look at the money twice before you spend it. Quickly! <clears throat> Now then, which of you lot is the vicar here? I am, yes. me, that gentleman. <laughs> I shall repeat my question. <laughs> which of you, if any, is the vicar here? He I is, am, I am, I am. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I shall repeat my question just once more. Which of you is the vicar here? <laughs> <laughs> so, you won't talk, huh? Lost your tongues now, have you? My good sergeant. Now then, now then, none of your soft soap. Humour him, old boy, humour him. Call him general. Ask him what he did at Lady Smith. What did you do to Lady Smith? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, watch this, watch this. Are you doing this again? Eh? Good Lord, no. Is he the vicar here? No, I... Are you the vicar here? You know very well that I'm not. How does he know that you are not? Because he's the vicar here. I protest, sergeant. <laughs> I must point out that the obvious way to find out who is the vicar is to ask his wife. <laughs> yes, well, there's something in that. <laughs> now then, ma'am, I suppose you are the vicar's wife. Oh, yes, sir. Well then, which of this lot is your husband? This is my husband. What? That is a lie, eh? I am my wife's husband. <laughs> Penelope, have you gone mad? I tell you, I am the vicar of this parish and this lady is my wife. Well, why doesn't she say she is? Yeah, Penelope, for heaven's sake, tell this man the truth. Ah, truth will out. That's what I always say. But what do you always say? Shut up. I've noticed that. <laughs> Your identification card, if you please. I do not carry my identification card in my pajamas. Default at number one. Your identification card, if you please. It's in my other suit. Default at number two. Your identification card, if you please. Oh, so that's Betty Grable. <laughs> oh, I seem to have left it home. Terribly sorry. Very naughty of me. Very. Default at number three. Your identification card! If you please. Believe it or not, Sergeant, I'm the ghost of Hamlet's father. I do not have an identity card. Default to number four. <laughs> oh, a comic <laughs> parson, eh? Well, you don't make me laugh. Your identification card! Certainly, Sergeant. Blimey, he's got one. <laughs> Lionel, the vicarage, Merton cum Middlewick. Oh, villain! That is my card! That is my identification card! Those are my clothes! That man knocked me down and took them from me! Well, why didn't you say so before? Because I didn't recognize him! But this card proves it! That is precisely what happened to me! 
The German attacked me and stole my clothes. I told you, didn't I, Bishop? What? Oh, oh yes. Yes. You low-down, double-crossing bunch of baskets, we know. You, Sergeant, you did that. You did that. You did You are under arrest. They all love it. Yeah, I'm just pulling off 
Understand. Oh, so go. 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 Go